I am Professor Dr. Emmanuel Guardiola. I'm professor at the Cologne Game Lab. It's an institute of the Applied Science University of uh, Cologne. And uh, before that, I was in the industry for 15 years. So uh, I'm, you know, when you have only 10, year, 10 years of experience, you can, we were considered as veterans. <laughs> but uh, so I am uh, some kind of veteran in, in the industry. And uh, I work for uh, publishers like Ubisoft or independent studio like Don't Not. Uh, on many many titles, I, I release around 30 titles on many platforms during my uh, industrial career. Uh, a career, and uh, now I'm more working on research projects that I will share with you uh, during this presentation. So, uh, the, for this presentation, um, the the idea was to talk about uh, the education of making games and how how we we can teach uh, how to make games. And so I will present our institutes because uh, uh, it's supposed to be a, a good example in terms of managing the teaching. I will talk about some other uh, place like the Engvin, the National School of Video Game in, uh, in France, uh, who, are, who is also a, a very interesting uh, place to, to learn how to make video games. Uh, so yeah, about um, uh, what we will see today. So I will shortly present the Colon Game Lab itself. Then I will talk about what are the, the, some of the core main challenge of teaching games. And uh, then I will present different research projects uh, that we are doing uh, in, the, in the lab currently. Uh, so this is the building where uh, settled the current game lab uh, five or six years ago. It's a former cable uh, say a factory, a cable factory, uh, and they provide the first cable for the uh, Golden Bridge in San Francisco, uh, so more than one century ago. And so now it's transformed into a, some kind of uh, IT media uh, place where you have the International uh, School of Cinema and also uh, the Cologne Game Lab. Um, so I, I'm, I will make a very short story of, uh, of, the Colon, of the Colon Game Lab. In fact, the story starts when two persons, uh, Bjorn Bartoldi and uh, Professor Dr. Uh, Gundolf Reiermuth, uh, create this institute uh, uh, 10 years ago. It's originally, it was, um, it was a research institute and uh, they create, in the same year, they create um, uh, a first master called Game Development and Research. And the goal of this master was to help people who are not from uh, game or IT uh, courses to get an MA, a master in, in the field of game. So you could be, for instance, someone working, uh, making studies in history or psychology, and you want to get into game, then it was like the kind of master you could, uh, you could pass. Uh, so we become uh, a part of the faculty of the cultural of cultural science of the Ecole, uh, in 2013. So it means that we were officially integrated to the to the uh, faculty of the university. And in 2014, we start the one of our main uh, courses that is the bachelor in digital games. I will come back on it later. And so to to feed these students in this uh, new bachelor, the, um, the institute uh, hired seven new professor in 2015. It was like just a boom, <laughs> an explosion of the people working on, um, on this. And uh, three years later, we created the master in digital games. In fact, the master of digital game, it's a consecutive master of the bachelor in digital games. And we sign uh, uh, partnership with the National School of Video Games to have student exchange between the two training. So, and uh, now we are creating new uh, master, one dedicated to animation. So I guess it will interest people here uh, about uh, animation for film and games. And uh, also another master about uh, engineering and programming for a new a kind of uh, hardware. Huh? So that's, uh, we are creating now, we are extending our panel of uh, of degrees. Um, so what the teams looks like, in fact, we are autonomous. We, even if we are a part of the, our faculty, we are in a separate building and we have a little team that is working autonomously. And so we are 10 professors uh, and you can see in the different field in which we teach. We teach. Uh, so like game design, game art, informatics, media and game studies, sound design and economics that are our main uh, 
field of uh, teaching. Uh, there are also uh, 12 academic assistants who are permanently, permanently here to help us to run the, uh, the lab and, 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 uh, and the training. And we have six staff number. And in fact, and we have to manage around, let's say 300 uh, student total when you accumulate the bachelor, the master and the PhD candidates. So uh, that we have 300 uh, student total. So about uh, the the training uh, the training itself. <coughs> Sorry. Um, to uh, to teach in video games, one of the main thing is uh, to fit with the with the way we are doing games. And one of the first characteristic of making games it's the fact that it's disciplinary, multi <coughs> multidisciplinary. You have uh, artists and designer, project manager. Uh, extra so people from many different eras who are working together to make to create something so uh, it was like a model to create the the, the curriculum uh, for to teach uh, how to make video games uh, at the Colon game lab we have three main specialties one is uh, game art so it could cover uh, concept art to 3d assets and environment uh, animation uh, all these aspects so people can be a bit more specialized into it but we consider it as a one speciality in, in the curriculum we have uh, game design so for the game, game designer either if they are very interested more by they could be more interested by level design narration uh, system uh, building etc but in any case we have this this uh, uh, particular speciality and game uh, informatic again we can have many speciality in game informatic but we offer uh, a glimpse of uh, all the many facets of the of what is game informatic and so we have people students who apply for these different uh, specialities and they will have special uh, teaching about it and we also have uh, uh, a, a big part of our teaching is also media and game studies and we want to we want all our students to have a strong academic and scientific background about video games even if they are, even if it's a practical teaching globally, they all have uh, media and game studies le uh, lectures. Um, here I will show you how the, the teaching are separated. Here are all the different type of teaching we are doing at the Colon Game Lab. This is the Colon Game Lab um, website. You can go on it. You have a lot of information about the, the training, etc. So as, as we saw a bit sooner, okay, we have the three main specialities that are game art, game, uh, game design, and game programming, but we also give to each student a lecture about sounds in games. And the ones who are the more passionate by that sometimes switch a little and want to do uh, uh, sound design at the end. And so, but uh, we offer these lectures to everyone, the game with media and game studies, and we also have media economics and entrepreneurship. It, it's quite, from, from my experience of, uh, teaching and or contributing into many schools since 2000, uh, it's quite hard to understand who will be a good project manager or a good leader, uh, like when you are 18 or 20 year old applying for a, for a game school. So the idea here is to say, okay, let's provide a glimpse of what it means to, to think about how to manage team, how to manage marketing, uh, prediction timeline and extra. Well, let's have a, give a glimpse to anyone and maybe some who are more interested by that will pop up and the people who have the ability to do that. So uh, so we, as, uh, as Game Studies and has Sounds, uh, the, the creator of the bachelor decide to offer this lecture to everyone. And uh, what this, um, this way of uh, uh, creating, teaching games it's not new in fact if you look at the engine they, they start to teach uh, a video game in 2000 in 2001 or something like that 2000 2001 uh, they already plan they already uh, created six different sections you are as a uh, as a master student at the engine in france you can either be in game design in visual design in sound design in ergonomics game programming or project management so and they, they, as you see there are many uh, specialities that are common with the, the bachelor of the colon game lab well the only difference is you may have access here to a specialty that is called ergonomics uh, ergonomics is all the people who will do user-centered approach 
playtesting, uh, focus group, etc. We manage uh, uh, also the why not uh, the uh, in-game login when you are looking for the data in your games to see how the player behaves, etc. So, uh, but again, as you see, uh, the model is to use uh, uh, to have every every speciality you need to make a game in the same place. Uh, this, in fact. Uh, it's uh, at the moment you have a, a multidisciplinary uh, uh, art or um, uh, creation means uh, you need to put all the people needed to create one uh, uh, to create something a game in the same place and uh, and we'll, we'll, it will work that to a second point that is uh, uh, it's project days here we need all the people to create a game in the same place so they can create games and uh, and it, this is not new here I have the the, the example of the FEMIS, that is the, the main and the most famous French cinema school. And again, uh, here you can see that they have the same approach. And in fact, they inspire the, the engine in France, the, the way they, they teach. So you have several departments like screenwriting, directing, producing, cinematography, etc. And so you need in the same school, all these people to be able to create movies. And so the, the, the approach was quite similar uh, for uh, the main uh, the main training in uh, in Europe, uh, so so here I, I put a warning about um, because maybe some of you want to go into the, into the uh, the field of game. Uh, you can see in many private schools uh, that that they create some uh, curriculum called game design, and that's it. No programming, no art, just one main thing that is game design. If you do so, it's it's quite difficult to ed even train yourself, like uh, in the way you will work in your in your career later on. Because uh, having only game designer in a in a uh, in the class uh, in the classroom, it's uh, you really handicap the entire training. That's my opinion, I, and I have teach uh, in the two uh, uh, in the in the two manier. So um, so I. I on courage, if there is some people who want to create in public or private uh, institution, uh, uh, if there are people who want to uh, create a training, I encourage them to have this model of multidisciplinary approach. And uh, it seems to be much more efficient. Um, so as a second uh, aspect, a second challenge, let's say, of, uh, of teaching is the recruitment. Uh, being game designer, it's uh, maybe not as attractive as being YouTuber currently among the teenagers and people who just finished their high school, but it's uh, it's high P making games. It's a it's a big thing. Uh, so um, this is what we um, the number of candidates we have uh, each year uh, at the Colon Game Lab. We only have forty five maximum uh, rooms in the room in the classroom. Oh. Uh, so, and we have up to 600 candidates coming, uh, so it's enormous. And I know that from, for the engine, they are, they are close to that, to these numbers too. And uh, so it means that there are people who want to come. And so the way, and so the recruitment is critical. Uh, in, uh, maybe 20 years ago, when you ask people if uh, to come into a video game uh, university or training, uh, you can ask them a, a very few things because those people didn't have access to anything to make games. Nowadays, it, nowadays it's not the case. Nowadays, people have access to free tools to make games, hundreds of tutorial online, many ways to contribute to Global Game Jam or things like that, where you can practice. It's a, if you are passionate by game, really, we can see it in your CV and uh, in, in your curriculum vitae. So if you, you, we may be able to see games in it, just like it's, it, it just like art school. I mean, if you come without drawing uh, uh, or painting when you apply for an art school, what are you doing here? So it's it, it's the same. No, there is no excuse. We we have everyone have access to create games, even very small things, first try, twenty, etc. Again. 20 years ago, we didn't have any literature about games. No, you have game design books everywhere. Okay, so you type game design on Amazon, you will find 30 titles or something like that. So, um, uh, so we are we are uh, attentive to that. We will look in the CV and the motivation letter if the candidates 
uh, are really motivated, if they already make the step of being passionate by making games, not playing games, playing games, okay, I guess everyone can say, I play games, I say I have six year old, etc. We don't care. We care about, are you really passionate by that? Uh, so, and at the same time, we, we, we have to evaluate their creativity and uh, also their, uh, the, their faculty of conceptualize uh, complex things. So for that, we, we have two, um, uh, two uh, say, uh, two um, uh, tasks to do, two tasks to do. One is we give a topic, uh, let's say in April or something like that, on the, our website, and we ask to each candidate to create a little concept about this topic. Last year, it was uh, Love of My Life, the, sing, the song of uh, Queen, plus a text of Roland Barthes about love. And so it was globally uh, love uh, in a certain way, uh, the topic. And so the, the, the student has, the, uh, the candidate has to create a game concept and put a certain emphasis on the speciality they want to have. For instance, if you, are, you, you want to be a game designer, maybe we ask you to describe a bit more the gameplay. If you are an artist, okay, you have the concept, then give, you give us some concept art or something to, to imagine how you see the game, etc. Uh, so they have that to provide and also a short essay about uh, the text we provide, like the, uh, the Love of My Life and the text from Bartel, from uh, Bart's. And uh, so they, they make a little essay. So with these two um, uh, tasks, we are, able, we are able to have a good idea of the creativity and the uh, conceptual capabilities of the students. Mm -hmm. And then we make a little selection of a few one and we make interview and we select uh, 15 person per uh, speciality. So yeah, that's the, the, the maximum we have. And uh, the, for the, the engine works quite the same. Uh, and uh, also the major uh, movie school in France, at least in France, are working also the same. So that seems to be a, an interesting recurrent way to recruit good people. And the recruitment is key to the success of the school. And uh, uh, so uh, you, if you want to, to create some, such a teaching, you might pay attention on the way you recruit uh, people. Also, there is a specific thing at the Cologne Game Lab. It's the fact that everything is in English. Even if it's a German university, our institute do, does everything in English. And 30% and of our students are foreigners from everywhere in the world. I think we have 40 different nationalities in the, in the staff and the, and uh, the students, so it's uh, all over the world. And also English is also important because this industry is in English. It, it, uh, you will certainly work from, for a company of different nationality in your career in video games. So and English is uh, the international language of video game. Um, then <coughs> we reach another point of the, um, of the teaching. It's, uh, uh, it's quite hard to imagine teaching video games saying, okay, this is how games are, and then let you go in the industry, do, do what you have, what, do what you think it's, uh, it's good to do. But uh, so all the, the major training uh, on video games are based on project. Even if you have uh, global common training, specialty trainings uh, with lecture and uh, seminars, etc., uh, you have a lot of project to do. Here, this uh, table, just, them down. This table is the entire curriculum for the bachelor in, uh, uh, in game development, in digital games at the Cologne Game Lab. So you see there are seven semesters, and at the end of each major semester, there is a collaborative project. What it means? It means that, uh, okay, at the beginning of the semester, you have uh, core lectures, then you have uh, a moment where we propose you a topic and you have to create a game about these topics and with a certain focus in terms of content. Uh, for instance, for the first semester, we ask the student to create teams of from five to seven person, let's say four to seven person, and they create teams and they will have to work on a game that is supposed to be ludic. So we just ask the student to create a game that uh, has an immediate gameplay that you can understand. It can be very arcade -ish. Uh, or thing like that. Uh, so you, you should have immediate fun playing it. And, and, we, and we give a topic like, uh, okay, happiness, uh, uh, war in the world, whatever. You, we, we select a topic, but the main purpose of the game is to provide 
for the first semester to provide a ludic game. During the second semester, we, we focus a bit more the, the, the common lectures on narration, on the narration. So then we ask as a second project to create a game with some kind of narrative in, in it. So um, the first is ludic, the second is narrative. Uh, then in the third semester, when they start to have speciality lecture, well, we ask them to create a multiplayer game, again with a certain topic, but uh, they will create a multiplayer game. During the fourth semester, <coughs> uh, oh, the, there is an inversion now, we just in, invert that. During the fourth semester, uh, the project we ask them to do, it's an experimental project, uh, like using uh, uh, augmented reality or having a new approach of game or creating some kind of escape room or yeah, try to, to be, uh, uh, experimental in your approach. In the fifth semester, they have uh, a trainee or they can, uh, they can have an internship somewhere. And on the sixth semester, they have an, a new collaborative project that is uh, impact games. So it means games that we have, which, which have a measurable impact on life, like educational games, game for psychology, for humanitarian, uh, for health, etc. <clears throat> so you should create a game, a game that uh, convey something and has some kind of impact on the society or people. And the last semester, the seventh semester, is about their own project. So it's the moment they are writing their bachelor thesis, so they, they have to share it. Uh, I will not go through all of all that, but it's just to say that also in our master degree, we have the same approach of project with different uh, topic each time. So uh, when you go to the bachelor, uh, the bachelor uh, curriculum, for instance, uh, you, are, you can be sure that our students already created five games, and sometimes they made more, uh, but at least they create five, five games, and it starts to be some kind of inter experience, let's say. Okay, then. Uh, there is a, another, another challenge that is quite important. Here we were talking more about some lecture content and some and to explain how we build these exercise and things. Uh, <clears throat> one of the big challenges is to prepare them to the market. Yeah? And the market will evolve a lot. And uh, if I, I look at myself for during 20 years, in 20 years, I had something like, I work to make games on uh, around 40 or 50 different platforms. Uh, if you take the DS, the PC, all the all the Xbox, from the PS2 to the PS4, uh, like um, um, uh, the PC, the phones, etc. So, so it means really you sh you may you might be uh, let's say elastic, you know, adaptive to to the market and the change of this market. It's it's really really moving fast and constantly. And so here I'm just talking about the pl the, the platform, but. Uh, uh, among the new platform, also the mobile phone was changed completely the way to make games. Social, during my, my career, I see the apparition also of social games that were something big, really, that exploded at one point. And, and you can add to that new uh, interface, you know, no, new hardware, like uh, I did game for the Leap Motion, for, for the PS Move, for the Kinect. Uh, and sometimes you have even specif specific uh, hardware like those uh, Donkey Kong, you know, uh, bongos uh, or for Nintendo. So here you cannot teach the student to just work with one tool on one platform and doing the same thing. You cannot have that as an objective. Uh, you, you must have something that is uh, as, at a higher level and, and something that can help them to adapt the different tools they will see in their career, to prepare them to that. Uh, it, it, it will be something, you know, and uh, how we can prepare them for this future challenge. So we focus, for instance, on, on key concepts. One is gameplay. Gameplay is a, whatever it's a, a social game on Facebook or a PS5 game, uh, you will face this concept of gameplay yeah? and also the concept of interaction and, and etc. So you have some key concepts like that. Uh, I, I mentioned gameplay but because it's uh, very specific to our medium. And it's something that you don't, you, you have no lecture about it before coming uh, to this training, normally, before coming to this bachelor, for instance. Uh, storytelling, you have some. Storytelling, like in elementary school, 
every student have some lecture or some course with the, 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 the teacher about, okay, who is the hero of the story? Uh, who is the, the, what is the objective of the hero, etc. And you, you can have this kind of uh, studies uh, during, all, all along your normal um, school, you know. Uh, but gameplay was, it's not studied. Dynamic, dynamic, um, art uh, are not studied a lot, so interactivity neither. So these are key elements that we should provide to them. It's something that they should master, they, the concept of gameplay. Uh, also, we train their creative thinking and uh, push them to see things with multiple perspectives, because this is the, the, a way to see if people are creative, it's to see if they can look at the same things with three different maniacs, for instance how you can see that on a, on a, on a practical way. Uh, imagine a game designer. It's, it's a good sign if you see on, on his uh, notebook that the game designer is uh, writing a system with a list of rules, then create a little flow chart of uh, connection of things between them, and then draw some mock-up of the same situation. This is, this is a good sign of uh, having uh, a creative thinking. So we, we encourage that. And that could be applied to any platform, any type of game. It's, some, it's a skill that is independent of the content itself. Uh, the user-centered approach also, it's critical. You know, uh, we are making games for people. And so uh, we have to be connected to, uh, to the audience constantly. And there are many tools to do that. And these tools, again, are, again, are independent from the content itself. So uh, you can apply it in many things. Um, manage design under constraint. That's also something we, we train them a lot. Even uh, in particular during their project, uh, they have to do each semester. They have many, many constraints to, uh, and they have to answer a certain uh, list of constraints. Um, and there is also this key principle of the connection between intention and means, meaning we, uh, we push them constantly to express what is the intention of their game, of this gameplay, of this sequence. Oh, here you want the player to feel some sadness. Uh, here you want the player to master a new element in the game. So you have to create this, um, you have to be able to uh, describe the intention for a game or for a piece of a game or for a feature. And then you have to, you, you rationally connect that to some means, to some feature element that you want to create. And you can analyze, okay, is it fitting with my intention? No, yes, no. Again, this mechanism, it's a very creative mechanism. It's not dependent on the platform. It's uh, a, a mechanism that you can apply in many platforms, many genres, and etc. And then we also encourage them during the entire uh, courses to try several engines. I'm, I'm talking about the programmer in particular. And also uh, analyze mul multiple genres and not focus on one genre during your three years, etc. And also you have, we, uh, they have the one semester fully de uh, dedicated to experimental approach and device. So we, we try to have a glimpse in the next future uh, or the current trend uh, in the lecture themselves. Okay. Oh, so that all this list, as you see, it is a really uh, uh, it's some kind of roadmap of how we can teach uh, the student to be able to adapt to future um, device and uh, not only device but also platform and new genre that will appear in the future too, and also create genre because uh, maybe some of these students will create new genre in the future. Um, so. Even if we see, uh, even if we have all these uh, uh, elements previously uh, shown that about things that are not connected to, uh, to a specific genre or a platform, we have to prepare them to be able to integrate the company, uh, the, the market uh, easily. So we have several ways to do that at Open Game Lab. One is to involve companies into the institute. We have a board. And in the board, we have companies who are here and who can eventually help us to think about how we can facilitate the transfer of the student from the, the Colin Game Lab to companies and if they want to work in industry. It's only a fraction of students who want to work in industry. Another fraction prefer to go for academic, for instance. Huh? Um, we also organize events like Global Game Jam. It's this, these events help 
people from different environments to, to meet and eventually they will, after that, create a company or it, it happens. Huh? We already have the case of uh, uh, teams that meet during Global Gap Jam and decide to create games and companies together after that. We, um, so we have this moment where we encourage internships in companies. It's the, the fifth semester. Uh, and uh, or they can also do it in labs if later on they want to go for academic. Uh, we, our uh, professor in economy, creates uh, an organization to help startup, student startup, to find offices. We have even rooms in the building dedicated to startups uh, to support them during their grant application for their first games and to help to their development, how to manage that. And so, in fact, we have uh, we created uh, an environment that is uh, helpful for people who want to create their company after finishing their studies. Um, and also, uh, we uh, push the, the students to have a strong alumni network. I know it works very well, the organizing events and things. Uh, that's also something that we should be encouraged, certainly. Uh, I mean, uh, the, the people who, de who work uh, in the industry and who come from the Colon Game Lab will certainly appreciate to meet uh, the new recruit or the new people, the new generation and promotion of uh, the Colon Game Lab. So we, we bet on that and that seems to, it seems to work. Uh, so that's it for the, the different uh, um, challenges. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, I, I will speak a little about research. Uh, it's, a, it's a big thing for us. Um, this is uh, uh, an idea of the, of the amounts of money and research we are working on. Uh, so currently we have eight uh, running projects with a 1.2 million euro of budget. A total budget of 2.3 if we consider the partners that like other uh, university or private partner who are involved. Uh, and we already did advance, uh, 27 um, research projects, so they, they are finished. And, yeah, and, we, and we constantly apply to European or grant or uh, research grant in Germany uh, and it quite successfully. In fact, as, uh, for the size of our institute, uh, it's big in fact. Um, yeah, yeah I, I, may, I may share with you a few, um, few projects to give you a glimpse of uh, the different kind of, uh, of project we are doing. So Airtime VR, it's an interesting example because it didn't start uh, with um, uh, uh, with uh, scientific, it was in fact originally uh, the students who wanted to create a simul paragliding simulator, and uh, so they they created and, and in partnership with a company uh, of uh, uh, of paragliding a paragliding school. In fact, they recreate the environment of the of the paragliding school that you can see here, like in uh, in VR. And uh, you can do all the first lessons of the paragliding by in using the simulator. simulator. And so, uh, so this project was, uh, is really an applied project. It means uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, there is no strong research topic behind it, uh, except uh, how uh, we can recreate the sensation of uh, paragliding uh, in a simulator. Here you can see, the image we have a little fan you no know, that will simulate the winds for instance so yeah that's that's an example coming really directly from a student project that became uh, became um, uh, an actual uh, tool at the end uh, here i can show you the example of Antura and the letter this this was an, an actual research project on two and letters, uh, it was a uh, two and a half uh, year project where uh, it was an, um, a game that I called, sorry, originally made by the uh, Norwegian uh, Foreign Affairs Ministry. They wanted to found educational tools for Syrian refugee children in the camps, meaning that um, uh, refugees in general don't have access to proper education. They don't have school. Even if there there are schools sometime in the camps, these schools are overcrowded and only for a few hours a day. So uh, you can see the the case of uh, maybe twelve or fifteen year old uh, teenager in, in in refugee camps who don't know how to to read their their mother language. 
uh, because you, can, you should also consider that sometimes their parents are illiterate. So uh, that the answer uh, was to create uh, autonomous mobile phone games that we can help the student to learn their mother language and on the, at the same time provide some psychosocial, psychosocial support because we don't, they, they are sometimes in a stressful state. And so the, the, the game should pr uh, address those two things. Teach you the mother language in Arabic and uh, do some, some um, psychosocial support. Uh, so we, we, made a, uh, we made a game, with, uh, it, it was a, a complex, uh, one of the most complex games we have to do. The fact of being autonomous in terms of teaching is very complex. Uh, we work with uh, partners in Lebanon, Jordan, in Turkey, and so it was really an international uh, work. We, we were up to 60% involved in the development and the test on the field. Uh, there was uh, um, also an independent test funded by UNICEF uh, and All Children Reading uh, in the camps uh, in Jordan, in the major camps there. Uh, even if we, all along the, the production, we were in communication with little camps to make playtests and things, uh, UNICEF and All Children Reading funded uh, a strong uh, impact test to see if the game uh, actually hired these children? And the answer was yes. And so now we are publishing around that because it's, a, it's a, uh, an interesting achievement and to be able to teach without having any teacher or parent helping you. Uh, and also the fact that their psycho psychosocial state improve a lot uh, when they play the game. So yeah, that's, it, that was an ambitious project. And uh, at the end, when we release the game on the platforms, we get some money to do some marketing. And when I say marketing, it was marketing targeting refugee Syrian uh, families. And we, ha we had up to 300,000 downloads. It's a free open source game. And so, uh, um, and no, the, and the, the project, it, this one is an interesting project because it, it didn't end at the moment uh, the game was released among the families and the refugee. Uh, the, uh, after that, uh, with one of the major partners we had, it's a video game without border. Uh, borders. Uh, we uh, we also try to adapt the game in other language where there are other educational challenges like uh, Spanish in certain uh, South America countries where children do not go to school. How we can create a game for these children? Or uh, we are working on a uh, on a version for Afghanistan also for children who don't have access to school or to be used in certain classroom when you have plat uh, tablets and things like that. Uh, so the project it still uh, continue to exist uh, with new version of the game. And I don't know among you if, you have, if there are people interested by this kind of topic, but if you want to create a version of it in, an, in another language, contact us. Everything is open source and we can provide the, the supervision to, to make it. Uh, so that's, that was a, a, a big project. We also have here, this project is interesting. It was in collaboration with uh, uh, the Goethe Institute. In fact, uh, the, the Bauhaus project, the idea is, was to visit uh, Bauhaus uh, exhibition virtually in the, um, in the Goethe Institute. And so it was a long, uh, in really interesting collaboration between the Cohen Game Lab and Goethe Institute. Here you can see some image uh, of that. We, we have several uh, collaboration like that. We have currently a new one with a, a future science museum in Germany. They want to give a glimpse of the future to people and we are creating that uh, under the form of some kind of holodeck where you enter a place and where you can see the future uh, to, uh, to certain device. So the mis being doing things uh, for, for museography, let's say, it's something important for us. So I will not go through all the project. I just want to say that our main uh, uh, topics are health, psychology, humanitarian, uh, museography, uh, education. That's uh, our main topic of research. And it's large. I mean, and we, this is for the one we need to have a games at the end, but we also have a pure um, game studies research, like about this project that is uh, uh, game literacy here. It's really a pure game and, uh, and media studies. Um, okay then, and to, to end the thing about the research, uh, the Colin Game Lab also organized 
uh, important event each year called the, the Clash of Realities. Uh, it's a place where people can meet and uh, uh, we have many conferences of different uh, disciplines uh, about the, the, the mix of reality. Could be games or uh, augmented reality experience. Or it's very open. We have a master and PhD student presenting things during this uh, this clash of reality so uh, i invite you to check on the website if it happens it's free it's a conference that you don't have to pay to attend uh, it's funded by uh, by uh, institutions so uh, uh, an interesting event and not costly to, to attend to uh, we also have uh, smaller uh, research uh, workshop like this one the game analysis workshop uh, the game analysis workshop will constant consists in uh, we invite 10 researchers with di from different fields and during two days we analyze the same game. Each one is analyzing the same game. Like in, in 2018 it was Fortnite. Everyone analyzed Fortnite and, and then during one afternoon everybody share their finding. And it, so it was, it's a very interesting uh, academic approach on, um, on, game, and then on game research in general. Uh, so it's just also uh, I want to say that currently I update the number here. Uh, we have 10 and not 15. We have 10 PhD candidates currently. And uh, it's always possible to welcome new ones. Uh, if you are foreigners, you, you can go to the DAD. And it's a, an interesting, it's an institution that can help to found your uh, studies in Germany. So uh, if you're interested by doing a PhD in video games, uh, we would be more happy to welcome you. Uh, yeah, that's, and uh, that's it. That, that is the overview of the Korean Game Lab and uh, also some thought about it, uh, game education.